When fire destroyed Crestline Elementary, the number one priority was students and getting those students back in school as soon as possible. Just four days after fire destroyed their school, these Crestline Elementary students were back in the classroom with their friends and teachers and showing their lion pride. The quick return to the classroom is a testament to the strength, hard work, and spirit of the Crestline community and the entire Evergreen School District. The three alarm fire that broke out in the early morning hours of Sunday, February 3rd, was a devastating blow to the close-knit Crestline community. Nearly 500 students and 50 teachers were left without a school. My phone rang at 6.30 in the morning and um, it was my secretary. And of course on a Sunday morning when your secretary calls, you assume there's something wrong. And um, she told me that she had heard that the school is on fire. I actually went down to Crestline within probably an hour to an hour and a half of finding out and even at that point it was just surreal. Um, you know, you, you watch this place that you've been in just going to pieces and, and that's hard. I was scared and I was like, what school am I going to? And my mom was saying, calm down, your principal will help you, your teacher will help you, the district will help you. The Monday morning after the fire, with their school still smoldering, many Crestline parents, students, and teachers met at the East Vancouver Community Church for emotional support and information about what would happen next. My counselor was there, along with a lot of my support staff, to uh, be there for kids to talk about the loss. And, you know, kids are so resilient. The fact that we were all safe um, and they were able to see their teachers' faces Monday morning at the church or on site. We had people greeting families and then directing them to the church. Um, really relieved a lot of that anxiety because everything's replaceable. And despite the blow of losing their school, there was no time to dwell on the past. Silver lining is no kid got hurt. Nobody got hurt in that school. And you have to just kind of say, that's gone. Let's move forward. You know, I, I remember it, it, it just hit me. I'm standing there watching the fire um, Sunday morning. And, and, you, and you start thinking, OK, what are we going to do? Uh, and um, by 10 o'clock that morning, I had the right people in my office. We were dividing up the tasks. and. Um, we knew where we were going, and we just started to get it done. You know, John went right into action, and we went down to district office about 10 a.m. and just knew it was a loss and began planning on how we were going to get kids back in school. So we talked about what the options were and how we were going to do that. And by Monday morning, we knew where we were going to place kids. It was decided that for the rest of the school year, Crestline students would be divided between five other elementary schools in the district and would be in their new classrooms by Thursday. That set off a hectic three days of preparation, shuffling equipment and supplies in and out of classrooms. We have enough tables to take to Ellsworth. I mean, mm -hmm. if we pick these 21 up from York and we pick up the four from Orchards and the four from Hartwood. Looking at putting these classrooms in these other schools, the call also went out to all the elementary schools. What do you have that you can loan the Crestline teachers? And they started deploying our warehouse workers out to all these different schools to get desks, chairs, um, whatever these kids might need that the other elementary schools could loan out for the rest of the school year. Fircrest Elementary absorbed the largest amount of the Crestline students with 165 new faces in the hallways. To help make room for them, students enrolled in the district's Excel program were moved to new classrooms at the Flex Academy. They were here with their trucks and our staff stepped right in to help them load the trucks and it was teams working together to make this happen. We moved an entire book room, which is thousands of books, in less than an hour. And I can say, thankfully, no one got hurt and we didn't break anything. And so we just made it happen. And then have some of the smaller items come in after. Mill Plain uh, Elementary Principal Karen Fox directed a group of teachers, parents, and students who helped get classrooms ready for more than 90 Crestline kindergartners. <laughs> At Columbia Valley Elementary, Principal Jim Fernandez gave Crestline teachers a tour of their temporary home. 75 new students would be joining them. These are our new staff. Okay. 
Meanwhile, Crestline teachers were busy setting up their new classrooms, making sure everything was ready for the kids. And it's a new adventure and, and we're going to get through this and, and we have a beautiful space for four months to finish out our year and I feel very fortunate. So. And the kids will be here tomorrow. I know. Ready or not, That'll here they come. <laughs> Teachers also stopped by district headquarters to pick up school supplies, replacing some of the things they lost in the fire. People from the community had started donating school supplies, and so the teachers were coming in to get school supplies, and we were so overwhelmed with the number of school supplies, we were calling volunteers and folks to come in just to help sort them. With just a day to go before classes resumed, last-minute preparations were still underway. Ellsworth Elementary Principal Jerry Evans held a meeting with teachers to prepare for the arrival of 90 Crestline first graders. Technology staff installed computers in five classrooms at Riverview Elementary, getting ready for 93 third graders. And every school made a special effort to make the kids feel welcome. It sort of is a little school within a school. Uh, they have a different schedule than us, so they, they're coming at a different time, leaving at a different time. They are our guests, and we are here to just support them and serve them in whatever way we can. Arranging transportation for nearly 500 students was another piece of the puzzle. Since the Thursday after the fire, kids have been picked up at their regular stops, then brought to Mountain View High School, where another bus takes them to their new school. Good morning. Go right through here to find your teacher and find your bus. Our whole staff worked towards this one goal, was to get this to happen the right way today. And it was like, I just sat and watched him, told him yesterday, I was so impressed. Everybody just dove right in. What do you need us to do? And that was with everybody all over the district. The return to classes on the Thursday after the fire was an emotional day for Crestline students and teachers. And the kids were so excited to see their teachers. As soon as they saw their teachers, they, everything was fine. And that was amazing. At one point, Four of my boys just ran as fast as they could into my arms, and that was great. And with signs, hugs, and lots of Crestline red, every school was ready to roll out the red carpet for these kids. It'll be a new room, and it, it is a different school, but uh, we're here to honor uh, Crestline Lions, and, and everything we can do is going to be for them today. We're excited about them being here. I saw the um, posters and, like, the stuff. I was seeing signs and it just, I was very happy that um, they're going, that I would feel welcomed here. Welcome, guys. Well, when I saw all the signs all over the place, I started feeling that I was welcomed there. Feeling a lot better that, that I know that people are, that people I know are here, like my entire classroom which will help me a lot. As students settled into their classrooms, they met the principal of their new school. You know how amazing it is to see the resilient side of kids too. They've started to bond with their friends again and they already have their reading boxes out and they have smiles on their faces and they're just ready to go. These kids and their families are coming from a great loss. You know, um, that's your home away from home. But Crestline community still exists as well, and that's really important too. So I've already been telling the kids today, we're so happy to have them with us and have them a part of our community and be a part of theirs. And how exciting for them that they get to have two principals. They have uh, Mr. Fernandes and they have Mrs. Hyde. That's just great. By the time they hit the playground for recess, things were already starting to get back to normal for these kids at Riverview Elementary. They're so welcoming. Um, every school in some way has between the t-shirts or the balloons or the signs or the letters um, just embracing and kind of wrapping their arms around Crestline and saying, we'll take you in. You guys have been amazing. At the first school board meeting after the fire, Evergreen Schools Superintendent John Dieter announced that by September of this year, all grade levels of Crestline Elementary will be back together at a new temporary school. Back together so that our teachers can work together in their teams as well as their whole team and our students can be with their classmates and neighborhood friends as we're rebuilding their school. And with Crestline teachers looking on, he set a goal of September of 2014 to have a new permanent school built at the Crestline site. We're here today um, exhausted and grateful for everything that's been done and the leadership 
and um, making those decisions for us, but really with the focus on, 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 on the kids. They're progressing. They're resilient. And um, yeah, we're really excited to see all the challenges ahead of us uh, and see how we can help these kids. The kids always come first at all of our Evergreen schools. These students and teachers have been through a lot and getting them back in the classroom so quickly is a credit to everyone in the district and the entire Evergreen community. The words can't describe the experience that we've all been through and I expected many people in just every department just stepped up and it was a very monumental task that I'm so proud of everyone accomplishing.